Hi scholars, it's Mrs. G. I hope you're having a great, great day today and I hope that you're ready to learn some more core knowledge um, to get that brain working. And today we're gonna to be learning about how schools were different and similar uh, back then in the colonial times. So uh, in our last lesson, we read a story called The Merry Wives, okay? And the Merry Wives play tricks on their husbands. You remember? It's pretty silly, huh? Do you remember why the husbands did what their wives told them to do? Think about that. Do you remember why the husbands did what their wives told them to do? Well, they thought their wives were smarter than they were, okay? In colonial times, um, most men actually thought they were smarter than the women, okay? And this was because boys went to school and were educated and women did not get to go to school. They didn't go to school. So in colonial times, in colonial days, most teachers were men, okay? Today, when you go into Odyssey, when you go into your school, you see boy teachers and then you see girl teachers, okay? So today you see both male and female teachers in schools as well as girls and boys who are now equally able to get education in the United States, okay? So that's, really, that's a really cool thing. Um, today's read aloud is called The Teacher, okay? And it's about what school was like in colonial times, okay? So I'm going to ask you a few questions just to get you thinking, okay? To help you start thinking about what things might be different and what things might be similar between schools in colonial times and the school that you attend today, okay? So you're gonna think about some of these questions. Okay, you don't have to answer them right now, but as Ms. G is reading, I want you to think about these, okay? So the first question is, who gets to go to school? Who gets to go to school? And how do you get to school? What are some different ways you get to go to school? How do you get there? And how many teachers do we have in our school? Who is in charge of the whole entire school? What different kinds of rooms do we have in our school? Do we have just one classroom? How many grades do we have in our school? Where do students sit in the classroom? And what supplies do we use for writing? What supplies do we use for writing? Okay, so those are just some questions just to keep you thinking about maybe when Mrs. G is reading, you can say, oh yeah, that's what she was talking about. Or yeah, that's different. Or that's the same as what, what we do at Odyssey. Okay, so I want you to think about those things. Um, listen carefully to our read aloud about what schools were like long ago, okay? And pay attention to the differences between schools today and school in early America, okay? I want you to pay attention to those things. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start. Mrs. G is going to share uh, the screen like I've been doing, so you get to see the pictures as well. And let's make sure that we can get it going. I believe we are here. Alrighty. So yes, we're here. All right. So it is called the teacher, and here is our first picture. What do you think that's a picture? Of? Do you think it looks like a school? Does it look like your school? All right. Here we go. You have already learned in earlier read alouds that during colonial times, children had many chores they needed to do at home to help their families. So some children in colonial times never even got the chance to go to school to learn to read or write. Most boys, however, usually went to school, even if it was just a few years. Girls rarely went to school. The primary role in life for girls was to take care of the home and eventually to care for their own children one day. In early America, people believed that most girls didn't need to know how to read or write. Do you think people still believe this today? In our time right now, do you think people still believe that? All right. 
The very first schools in America were called dame schools. Okay, dame is another word for a woman or a lady. Okay, in a dame school, children ages six to eight were usually taught by a woman in her living room or a parlor. Okay, children were taught simple things like the alphabet or simple arithmetic. Arithmetic just means kind of like math, like addition and subtraction, what you've been learning. But writing was considered unnecessary in colonial times. They didn't have to write. It wasn't important in colonial times. During that time, once you learned how to read the Bible, you were considered educated. And educated means that you have all the training you need. You have all the knowledge, okay? As that was the only book considered worth reading. For most children, this was the extent of their education. In fact, most poor adults never learned to read at all. Eventually, in the towns in the northern part of the United States, schools called common schools began to spring up. These schools were much smaller than most schools today. In fact, many of them were simple buildings with just one cold room. Oftentimes, we call this type of school a one-room schoolhouse. As you can see from this picture, students sat on uncomfortable wooden chairs. See these chairs here? That's what they had to sit in. And I'm sure they were uncomfortable because they're wooden, okay? Or benches in straight rows facing the teacher, okay? Or they had to sit on benches here, okay? There was only one teacher. So children of all different ages went to school together. And so what that means is that first graders through fifth graders, so first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade would be all in the same class. Is that how we do it today? Do we do that at Odyssey? Are you, is kindergarten with third graders? The only source of heat in the schoolhouse was a single wood stove. The children were expected to bring firewood every day to pay for their schooling. If you forgot, you had to sit in the seat farthest away from the fireplace. Getting to school in those days was very different from going to a typical school today. There were no school buses or cars. All students walked to school, some for several miles each way, every single day. And once the students returned home, they still had a lot of work to do at home. There was no cafeteria or, or school kitchen either. So children usually brought lunch from home in lunch pails, not too different from today's lunch boxes. In those early days, there were no teaching materials or books other than the Bible. Because paper was difficult to make and was very expensive, students wrote on sheets of birch bark with lumps of lead or goose quills dipped in ink. And that was a mouthful. So when they said students wrote on sheets of birch bark, okay, that means the bark from birch trees. Okay, and then when it says with lumps of lead or goose quills, Quills means feathers, so they would dip their feather in ink, and then that's how they would write back in the colonial times. Eventually, students used a slate and chalk to write with, okay? So if you look here, this is a slate, and slate is just like a small chalkboard, okay? And it was better than paper because it was reusable, so you could reuse this, okay? And students could write with chalk, erase what they needed to erase, and then write something again. Okay, that's called a slate. The teacher in a common school was usually a man and he was called the schoolmaster. He was in charge of the school too because there was no principal. However, he usually didn't make enough money to build himself a house. So he would take turns living with different townspeople. A young unmarried teacher might, might spend a week in the baker's house, a week with the church preacher, a week with the miller, and so on. The schoolmaster was so, also so often required to do extra work around the village, okay? 
So we had to do extra work around the village, like maybe help the preacher ring the church bells um, or help the baker haul sacks of flour. So we had to do chores. Does this look familiar to you? Maybe something that you do sometimes or every day at school, okay? So it looks like they're at recess, okay? As things got a little more crowded in a busy one room schoolhouse, the teacher would let the kids go outside for a recess. If the class was well behaved, that is. Children played lots of different games, some of them similar to those you play today. They jumped rope and played tag and jack. So they did jump rope back then, just like we do today. And they played tag. I know a lot of you like to play tag with your friends. So they played tag at recess. So that's something similar. After completing common school, those few girls lucky enough to attend were sent home to work. Or if they came from a wealthy family sent to finishing schools to focus on knitting, embroidery, and the social graces. Boys had a lot more choices. A boy could either go back home to work the farm, learn a trade from the, his father, or become an apprentice to another tradesperson in town. Some very smart boys continued their schooling at Latin school. At Latin school, boys up to the age of about 15 learned another language called Latin and prepared for college. While early school life may sound kind of rough, it's important to realize how essential education was in those early days, as it is today, because not many people knew how to read or write. Those who could become very important people in their towns. They were relied upon to interpret written laws and official announcements. We are very lucky today because education is freely available to all children. Okay, so that was some information about, about how school in the colonial times was. And then you probably saw some things that maybe were familiar, right? And they were maybe uh, similar to what you do at school today. And then maybe there were some things that you were like, oh, we don't do that at our school. Okay, so, um, what I would like you to do now is I want you to do our think pair share. Okay, so you're going to share with somebody. Okay, and then you're going to go ahead and um, share with this person my question that I have for you. Okay, if nobody is there with you and you're just sitting there doing your schoolwork, uh, that's fine. You can share it in your head too. Okay, so my question is how would you feel if you had to work all day? and weren't allowed to go to school to learn and read. How would you feel if all you could do was just go to work and you weren't allowed to go to school and you weren't allowed to learn to read and write? How would that make you feel? All right, so I want you to just go ahead and share that in your head or with somebody else, okay? Um, and then for your assignment, your assessment for today for this lesson is you are going to draw three pictures how school in the colonial times were different than school now, okay? So you're gonna, I'm gonna say that again. You're gonna draw three different pictures of all the things that we learned today. Mrs. G showed you in our little pictures. You can go back and rewind the video to check if you need to. You're gonna draw three different pictures of how school in the colonial times were different than school now. So think about your school. Think about Odyssey and the things that you do, okay? So uh, something that was the same that we still do that the colonial in the colonial times they did was they had recess, right? You guys in kindergarten, you have recess, okay? Um, and you get to play tag and you get to do jump rope. Okay, so that's something similar. That's the same that you do. But Mrs. G wants to know some of the differences that you learned about. Okay, so draw your pictures, have mom or dad take your picture of the pictures that you drew um, so we understand and we can make sure that you, you understand our lesson, okay? And make sure we send that to our homeroom teacher, okay? And that completes a whole week of online learning. You did it. Miss G did it. We all did it. Um, so this is how it's going to work. And I think that we're doing a great job so far. 
and we're so proud of you and hopefully you're getting used to this. Again, if you have any questions, please reach out to your teacher. We're here to help you. We're all in this together. Okay, have a beautiful, beautiful weekend and Mrs. G will talk to you later. Bye.